What are your thoughts now? It's been a couple days since the race ended on this crazy finish in Austria. Hi, first of all, thank you for having me. Um, second of all, I feel like I'm still catching my breath from all of this. I, I was fully with you for the first 50 some odd laps. I thought this was going to be, you know, your typical, oh, you know, some two stop intrigue, like some back of the pack fighting. And then Max and Lando take one and two pretty decisively. And then all of a sudden we get an uncharacteristically long Red Bull pit stop. We get a Max lock up and we get this um, sort of epic back and forth fight, which I actually think the quotes afterwards have, you know, lasted longer in my memory than even the fight itself. Yeah, so let's start with that because enough, I think enough dust has settled now that I, the initial, um, I think, I think fair to say aggressive defending by Max Verstappen, not saying like unfair, we can debate that later, but aggressive defending by Max Verstappen, the shock has worn off a little bit. And now we are left with a p potential ruined friendship, um, a potential like <laughs> moment that changes the rest of the course of this F1 season. Um, questions about the rules and the enforcement of the rules and is Max, uh, is, he, is he a bad person? Is he a good person? Is he just a race car driver? Oh my God, so many things to discuss. So. I guess we should start with Lando Norris and his quotes after the race. Lando, just sum up how you're feeling right now for me, if you can. Uh, I don't know, what is that? Uh, disappointed, uh, nothing more than that, honestly. Just, uh, it was a good race. I look forward to, um, probably I'd say, just a fair battle, uh, a strong, fair battle. But um, I wouldn't say that's what it was in the end. So, um, yeah, tough one to take. Uh, it was a mistake-free race from my side, and uh, I feel like I did a good job, but um, I've taken out of the race, so nothing more than that. Just finally, for me, we spoke before the race, and I asked you about your relationship with him, your friendship with him, now that you're his closest rival, and you said you have respect in the car, both of you, and then outside of that, you can go for dinners or play paddle or whatever. Do you still feel the same way now? Will you speak to him? I don't know. It depends what he says. If he says he did nothing wrong, uh, then I lose a lot of respect for that. Um, if he admits to... Uh, yeah, being a bit stupid and running into me and just being a bit reckless in a way, then um, I have a small amount of respect for it, but uh, it's still a tough one to take, you know, when we're fighting for the win. And um, I'm trying to be fair from my side, and he just wasn't, you know, so I don't know, that's not what I'm thinking about. I don't care about that now. I just uh, got it for the team. To me, Meg, it seems like this friendship may be damaged beyond repair. He said that he will lose all respect for Verstappen if he doesn't admit some guilt. And we know that that is just not something that will ever happen. No, Max uh, was pretty decisive in all of his post-race comments. He, you know, sort of blamed it on the team, actually, and did some finger pointing as to, like, well, we should have never been in that position anyway, but also, like, I'm always going to race hard. I'm never going to race to be in second place. This, you know, it's just not who I am, and I, I did nothing wrong here. And uh, so, yeah, I, I would say the friendship is certainly threatened, if not ended. Um, I, first of all, I can't believe that we're at a place where we're asking professional athletes about the state of their friendship <laughs> after like an on track so battle. <laughs> it's so amazing. I feel like we're back in grade school here and, uh, you know, threatening people on the playground that like you're not coming to my birthday party if you don't apologize for this. And um, it, it, it's amazing. I, I can't believe that we're going to get to see them race again this coming weekend in Silverstone, too, with no week or two weeks in between to let things settle. I'm, I'm really, really excited to see how this plays out this coming week too. But yeah, I mean, Lando, I think is going to be sorely disappointed in how Max handles this. And I, you know, I don't know if Max is bothered by it at all. That is a good point that you bring up about this being the second part of a triple header. Do you feel like this sort of racing incident happens if this isn't something that's kind of simmering and then bubbles up over the span of a weekend with a sprint race that had sort of like similar storylines throughout it and a season in which I think for the last two weeks, there's been a lot of questions about whether the McLaren is actually a better car than the Red Bull right now and that Max is losing the sort of... Uh, tremendous advantage he had in the last two seasons in his car just being so much faster than everyone else yeah I mean this is really the first time that we've seen Red Bull be consistently threatened I think since early 2022 back in the good old days when it seemed like Ferrari was going to be a consistent competitor RIP Charles Leclerc yeah. and those title chances <laughs> and I'm still weekend. bitter about it 
<laughs> and this weekend. Oh my God. Um, but yeah, I mean, you have to feel like Max and Red Bull overall are starting to sort of feel this pressure. We're at a place where we're talking about and questioning whether Red Bull is the fastest car on track anymore. I still believe that until someone is able to beat them consistently, that it's hard for me to say anyone is faster. You know, in the sprint race, Max won. He got P1 in both qualifying sessions. He was in the lead for most of this race. But, you know, you see Lando coming up as quickly as he was behind him, and it's hard not to say that McLaren is surging right now and is finding a lot of answers in um, Red Bull you know, with Adrian Newey leaving and their tech department sort of in an overhaul. I'm really curious to see what they are able to haul out the rest of the season. The McLaren is better going longer on stints with better tire degradation. Um, The Red Bull has struggled with certain circuits that the McLaren is better on and the curbs. And we've talked about all of this on the show before. Um, So we won't get into too much detail, but I think you're right. I think that like the Max is feeling the pressure a little bit. He knows he still has a humongous lead and his lead got bigger this weekend because of the 10 second penalty <laughs> that really didn't penalize him at all, which is another no. thing we need to talk about. Um, and I think that you saw him being a little uh, his desperate, the right word, being a little desperate to maintain that position because he felt a real threat behind him. So um, what would you classify this uh, Verstappen move as? Is this just a blatant breaking of the rules? Is this him um, just using the rules to his advantage, knowing that he will not because he has not been penalized for this really in the past? Is this just like a race car driver trying to race his car? Like, where do we put this? Yeah, I've seen and heard a lot of people compare this to 2021 with him, and this seems fairly apt to me. That was the last time we saw him in a full sort of wheel to wheel battle with somebody else consistently. Obviously that time it was Lewis Hamilton. Um, Max is in a unique position where he is doing something that, you know, we heard Lando on the radio a lot on Sunday complaining that Max is moving under braking and this is so dangerous. And it sounded like he wanted to, you know, harangue him in a court of law over this, which uh, I think is a little bit extreme, but Max has certainly found something of a gray area in the rules where, you know, according to him, he is moving before he's actually hitting the brake. So to him, that's not moving under braking. And he hasn't really been penalized specifically for that to this point. So, you know, in his case, like, why would you change and do anything differently when you're gaining a competitive advantage over this and the FIA isn't doing anything to stop it. Um, Somewhat interestingly, I have seen, you know, most people piling onto Max, but one of his defenders this week has been Toto Wolf, which is um, fascinating considering that the last time this this was (laughs) happening was in 2021 against him and his team. Um, So, you know, we can parse about why Toto is is maybe doing that and trying to lure him over to Mercedes. But yeah, um, yeah, I don't think there's... (laughs) I don't think there's any incentive for Max to change at this point because he's doing well and he's gaining an advantage. And why would you switch that up at this point? Yeah. So there was the initial move, which Lando said was him um, moving after breaking to defend and reacting to to Lando's move. And then there was after they already made contact, he kind of pushed Lando into the grass a little bit. And so that yes. seemed to not be on the stewards radar at all because he was penalized the 10 seconds, ended up keeping P5. Um, and in the meantime, Lando, of course, had to retire his car, got no points, mm-hmm. even though it looked like with 20 laps to go, he might end up with points for first place, which would have been pretty big in trying to close that gap at least a little bit. Yeah. Um, so Max ended up with points. Lando ended up with no points. I think that your point about Total Wolf is interesting because a lot of team principals had some very strong words, including the McLaren team principal. Yes. We will listen to his quote now because he also uh, referenced the 2021 season and sort of put this on F1 and the FIA for not clamping down on Max's driving style. The stewards have found that Max was responsible for the incident. Max has just called it, I don't know if you heard it on the radio, ridiculous, and uh, Red Bull agree. They said that Max uh, Lando was in part to blame. How, obviously, obviously, how do you see it? Yeah. I yeah. see that uh, the, the entire population in the world yeah. would know who is responsible except for a group of people. But the problem behind it is that if you don't address these things honestly, they would come back. They have come back today because they were not addressed properly in the past when there was some fights with Lewis that needed to be punished in a harsher way. Like this, you learn how to 
race in a certain way, which we can consider fair and square. You're talking about Ma Brazil 2021 here. Yes. I mean, There's many uh, episodes. Yeah. The fact is that we have so much respect for Red Bull, so much re respect for Max. They don't need to do this. They don't need to do this. It's a way to almost compromise your reputation. Why would you do that? So, yeah, I think really interesting things have come out of this race. Um, and, and of course, as a newer F1 fan, I'm I'm desperate to find out what happens with the Max and Lando friendship now. I, I'm very intrigued to see how uh, Drive to Survive covers this. I, I have a, <laughs> a feeling that they're going to like open this episode with like a uh, slow motion, dramatic video of them playing paddle. <laughs> and it's going to be really heartbreaking and devastating to see this betrayal um, from Max Verstappen over his bestie. Um, but I don't know. Do you think do you think the two will be able to patch things up? I I would think so. I, you know, a lot of the quotes I'm sure were given in the heat of the moment. And, you know, especially Lando's respect quote was just um, iconic. Like if he doesn't own <laughs> up and, and admit this, I will lose all respect I have for him. Whatever. We see um, F1 drivers do this a lot where they give these like incredible quotes in the heat of the moment. And then you ask them about it two weeks later and they're like, oh, like I don't even really remember saying that. Like, it's fine. I, I feel like these are all very... Um, you know, dramatic individuals when it comes to trying to win races. Yeah. And, and they're all sort of uh, doing like a little presidential campaigning afterwards to try and say that they were in the right whenever a situation like this comes up. So they're going to give their strong quotes. Um, I would be surprised if, you know, by interviews on Thursday, if they were still dwelling on this. But, you know, you never know if, if either of them decides to take this more personally than the other, then maybe... Uh, the days of sim racing together and playing paddle together will be um, left in the dust. Be, it Tra would be really tragic. tragic. Yeah, so tragic. <laughs>